Hey, Larry here from Red 6. Uh, we just got spy shots from the 7th Gen Mustang's interior leaking. Gotta say, I got some thoughts. Boom, big reveal. Uh, today's the day, guys. We got a chance to look inside the 7th Gen Mustangs. And I'll just come right out and say it. I think I'm okay with the direction that they're going with all this. So long as I understand that, you know, this is a more modern Mustang. And we have to accept that Mustangs aren't going to be the way that they always were. You know, times are changing around us. And there's just a couple of caveats that I think that when I look inside the interior, when I look at these spy shots that were revealed, uh, it makes me want to say a couple of things that I wanted to share in this video. So getting right into the juice of the content first, let me give credit where credit is due. I first came across the information because I was watching a Stang Mode video, a uh, really good YouTuber who makes a lot of great Mustang content, so please check out the channel. You know, I gotta give credit where credit is due. And Stang, uh, he credits <laughs> Mustang 7G, the forum, from where he first came across this information. So wherever you feel like you wanna go, if you want the video version or if you wanna read, there are two places that you can go to get more information than this video will provide. Now, let's get into what I think so in this first shot that I already have showing clearly we have a very big dash all digital which in some it, it's like an acknowledgement here that we are no longer in the classic era all the design inspiration you know as far as the location of the elements inside of the panel for example your speedometer and your tack are similar to the Mustangs that you'll see now with their digital readouts um, but I think I'm excited about this because with a full panel there's things that you can do to customize the dash altogether. I don't know if, if you guys are in tech like I am, but you know, if you know people who can mod stuff, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of options there to like really customize uh, the screen. And I'm sure if they go full digital like this, somebody's going to figure something out. So I personally am excited to see them go in this direction because if imagine if you wanted to customize your layout, like imagine you go to the track often and you have very specific information that you want to show uh, and you're able to, you know, get somebody's third party version of the screen. That'd be great. I don't know. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but that's the first thing I think about. So in this screenshot, we see another infotainment center that's also paired next to the digital cluster. So that's cool. Right hand gets to select your car modes and, you know, whatever song you want to listen to on Apple CarPlay, things like that. Um, it does look like it's a little orient. It's, it's got a bit of a tilt to it. Just judging from this screenshot, like I don't think the cluster panel and the media panel that's right next to it feel like they share the same plane in, in as far as perspective goes. So one is tilted and one isn't. And I'm going to assume that that's obviously the media center on the right. It's a little more tilted towards the driver. You know, we saw this in the, the Corvettes. We and, it, and there's a lot of cars that actually do it like this. It makes you feel you're probably going to spend most of your time driving by yourself in a Mustang anyway. So this totally makes sense. It's definitely not a family car. You're not going to pack it with people. And sometimes you'll have a passenger, but, you know, you're the driver. You're in control. I guess that's kind of where a lot of cars are going, especially in the like the sport coupe or sport compact or just sports car class in general. Totally makes sense. This is nothing that we're not used to. Um, looking at the steering wheel, big fan of going with the flat bottom steering wheel. Uh, I personally have big legs. I'm a tall dude, so I like knowing that I'm getting even half an inch to an inch more clearance at the bottom. Uh, great for people like me, and I think that the design is just cool. It feels a little more performance because if you're used to seeing flat bottom steering wheels right now, you're probably looking at vehicles that get a lot more performance than you know, your Chevy Malibu, Geo Metros, or whatever type of vehicle from yesteryear that has completely round steering wheels. I like seeing sporty cars go in that direction. And before I move on to the next slide, I do want to say all of this is my own opinion. I do not work for Ford. I All I'm doing is responding to the spy shots, obviously, so I could be right, I could be wrong. Just take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and sit back and be entertained by my thoughts on where I feel like this this um, this interior is going to go. If you look at the shift knob, you know, sad news for everybody. It looks like it's going to be um, automatic focused, and that makes sense to me. Um, I recently just got into driving manual myself. And I love my manual Mustang. I drive it way more than I drive the automatic Mustang. But if we really want to talk about the reason why manufacturers have to go in this direction, EPA is cracking down on everybody and everything, not just the consumers, but also the manufacturers. They are requiring car performance in gasoline markets for their vehicles to reach numbers that are requiring them to make decisions like this, like being able to go completely automatic, shaves off a lot of human error and inefficiencies in the drivetrain. So you're 
you know, you might get faster shifts and better performance out of the car, which is marketable from Ford. But also, you know, they're going to be able to get better dependable fuel economy, which is also marketable for Ford. So that makes sense. Plus, you know, if you really were to break down how many automatics sell versus manuals, just if you look at the last generation, I would guess it's probably maybe 91% automatic and 9% manual. So if you had to disappoint one of those two audiences and build a business around selling this car and making sure you turn a profit, you're probably going to stick with the 91% and try to convert the 9%. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're coming to that age where it just, they're getting attacked on all sides from fuel pricing, from EPA, from sales, right? Like if they need to listen to their customers, 91% say they don't care about manual. And again, it's just a rough number I'm pulling out of my butt to, to, to make a point but I stand by the point. I understand why Ford is going in that direction. Enthusiasts or not, there that's just that's just where things are going. You know, we have to accept that. Um, I'm sure there will be options and ways to drive manual. Like you can buy an S550. You can buy any of the previous generation Mustangs. You may not be able to get a brand new car, which needs to fit in the modern era. But nothing stops you from buying a car that is manual that was made just a couple years prior. But there is something that I do see here that really makes me laugh. If you look underneath the hazard light button, you will see that there's still a cigarette lighter input. And, you know, that's that technology has been with us for decades and decades and decades. So I'm always glad to see, you know, little remnants of the classic history of automobiles around with us. And uh, I'll, I'll give credit to the cigarette lighter. That's probably the oldest hasn't changed a bit technology <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be in this car when, when this car comes out. Let's move on to the next. Uh, cool. So one of the things that I wanted to call out here was when I was looking at this bottom instrument panel, uh, I actually like the fighter jet switches. Like that just feels really cool to me. But I was also born in the 80s. And so, you know, people my age might get that, oh, this feels like a, a fighter jet. I feel like I'm, you know, Top Gun or something when I'm turning on my car or changing these modes. I think it's great. But they do protrude. And mine haven't broken, but I've always wondered if anybody has bumped one wrong or has done something wrong that actually caused some damage to those switches. And, you know, it might be a little bit of ex more of an expense to repair. Whereas here, it looks like a soft touch plastic or even a soft touch rubber uh, pod console where you just replace the whole thing. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of the design as the jet switches, but I mean, I, I guess like I don't really have much to say there. Um, in regards to looking underneath though, I do see another thing that's interesting is they're going with USB-C and then also what we consider traditional USB 3.0, 2.0 or 1.0. Um, they have both, which is great. But I always think about when you run into situations like this as a designer myself in, in my career, like this is, they don't want to go forward, but they don't want to lose behind them. I understand. But like, it's kind of like, I wish they took the Apple approach and just went with the forward because you can always get a little adapter that goes back, but your car feels like it stands the test of time better when you adopt forward. Because what happens, let's say five years from now, when if no one has regular USB anymore, maybe even 10 years from now, who knows? Um, that, at that point, then the car has another reminder of something that you don't use anymore. Like, for example, in my current S550, I have a CD, I have a CD slot for a CD that I can put in. I have never put in a CD. I know it's there. My car was made in 2016. I know it's there. I could use it, but it's just remnants of a time that is no longer here. And so that's kind of what this, you know, what that little feature reminds me of is there's going to be a point where I would rather have just had two USB C, uh, USB C slots instead of, you know, having the old square. Um, maybe you guys don't agree with me, but that's just something that pops out to me. Let's check out the next one. So here we're getting a, a little closer look at just the modes down there. I saw the pony button as well. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, when I was watching Stang Mode's video, he was saying that he believes that that's going to allow you to change the modes that you're using. Like if you want to go to track mode or if you want to go to wet, you know, just the different drive settings that are already built into your car. So that's great and all. I, I, I don't know. I can't confirm. I also saw the star. Uh, I'm not sure what the star is going to represent. That could be fake out also because, you know, I doubt some random person with a potato camera with a lens on it was able to get this close to the Mustang and take this many spy shots. And so I know that, you know, Ford has to know that this was coming. And so maybe some of that is fake out. I really don't know. Um, 
I, I don't even have a guess, to be honest, what the star stands for. But yeah, that's I, I still wish the, the, the fighter jet switches were there, though. That's my, my thoughts on that. And then just coming back to an overall, trying to get a look at the interior of the car as a whole. Um, I don't feel sectioned off from my potential passenger. Uh, it doesn't feel overcrowded. I do like that the center console area is a little bit tilted towards the driver. As I said, uh, I'm sad to see that the drive mode for, you know, using your paddles is manual instead of like sport. Uh, manual makes more sense. Don't get me wrong. And it, it's probably marketing <laughs> to like, hey, you know, we're, we don't have a, a stick shift at all. So let's call this mode manual because just having that word connotation might convert some of the people. Um, I'm used to sport mode. My automatic has a sp- you know, uh, park reverse neutral drive S for sport, I guess. And so now seeing that change to manual, like I get it. I probably would have done the same thing as a marketing team to, to pull some people there. So yeah, these are the spy shots guys. I don't know if any of this has made me more excited or less excited about the coming of the new car. Obviously it's really going to boil down to, do we like the body? Do we, do we like the overall look and the whole presentation? I definitely think this feels a lot more run of the mill. Like, Aside from knowing this was a Mustang, like just imagine you didn't know it was a Mustang and you were looking at this, you might guess, you know, Audi, you might guess, you know, uh, Lexus or, you know, something like that. Not in regards to maybe the material types or like the bezels or anything like that, but mainly just looking at the media center and the, the console and the steering wheel. There's, there's nothing about this that is screaming in my face like high performance vehicles or, or sport coupe or anything like that. So I feel like they're not going to an extreme here. They really are just trying to modernize it. They really are just trying to make something that is going to fit in the world that they're designing this car for and try to capture as many people as possible. They don't really lean in any one direction that makes me say like, yeah, this is definitely the modern car that is for enthusiasts, right? Or the modern car that's not for, like, I don't feel like they're taking a big stance uh, in their design choices. Uh, It does look like the media center is touchscreen though. Now that I'm looking at it some more, I see some sliders. So there you go, you know, throw your little finger on there and and increase the stiffness of your steering wheel or decreases or whatever these, (laughs) these little sliders represent uh, in the moment. I think that's cool. More than anything though, I, I really hope that someone is smart enough to figure out a way to, you know, upload some firmware and some firmware crack or something that lets me change all the designs. If, you know, if we can get a hold of that. I'm really asking for a lot here, to be honest. I know that I am because I don't know how to do it. Don't get me wrong. I just know from all the time that I've seen people do it with iPhones and with Playstations and all kind of stuff, I'm really hoping that there's an opportunity someday to like fully customize the way that those screens present information to me because I would love to have my car be branded. You know, whenever I turn it on, it might be, maybe it's my YouTube channel logo for the car and then the rest of the stuff. Maybe I want, you know, just different information in different places. Uh, I can hope I can dream. Let me know if the comments, let me know in the comments, if you think that this is going to be something that we'll see, or if I'm, you know, drinking some of the finest and only the finest, let me know as well. If you think I'm way off the mark, that's completely fine. Let's have a discussion in the comment section. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I'm still excited about this car coming out. I think more than anything, I'm more interested in the performance and the styling. I'm happy to see that the interior is modern, but the question that I have for current Mustang owners is how do you feel about all wheel drive potential as a Mustang? I'm so used to rear wheel drive in the Mustang and how that feels. I've never driven an all wheel drive car myself. And so I'm interested in seeing like what that change could mean. You know, you have generations and generations of alive Mustang fans who are now going to have to, well, potentially be switching to an, excuse me, all wheel drive platform. That's that the whole driving experience is different uh, from what I hear. (laughs) I don't speak from experience there, but just knowing that, right? Like you're going away from your bread and butter. You're going away from the expectations. And this is beyond what technology and, you know, times and, and global resources require us to do. Uh, you can still have a rear wheel drive, you know, high mileage vehicle. Um, So it's a choice to go into all wheel drive. And I believe obviously that's a performance choice. I mean, you look at Chevy, they've already done it with the C8, you know, rear wheel drive is getting smoked by a lot of cars that aren't even really sporty cars. They're just electric and all wheel drive instant torque. And they're, you know, they're beating us at stoplights, so to speak. But anyway, guys, that should do it for this video. I think that 
this is going to be very exciting times when this car launches. We should be about a year away from finding out all the details about this car in regards to the looks, the performance, you know, the MSRP price. I feel like Ford is about to start doing their marketing and hopefully in a few months. Uh, I was told that we might see this at the Detroit Auto Show, and I think that came from the Stang Mode video that I was watching. Uh, I only saw the video once, so I'm quoting something that I've only seen one time, but I believe that that's where I got that information. And it's, it's I don't know. I, I wish Ford luck. I definitely want the Mustang to be successful. I definitely want its performance to be, you know, noteworthy. I, I would love to be able to compete with other all-wheel drive cars that are getting a lot of attention right now that are doing so well in a quarter mile. That's actually drag racing is my favorite compared to road racing. Everybody has their preference and that's mine. So I can see the value in having, you know, all-wheel drive power and, you know, a good motor to push you towards the quarter line finish line. So we will see. I will reserve judgment because it really does make or break for me the styling. I'm probably going to keep my manual transmission car, but I would be very, very happy if this car wins me over. Maybe I sell the V6 and I get something new. Who knows? And that'll do it. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Larry here again from Red 6. If you like the content you just saw, please subscribe, follow, pay attention. I'm going to keep releasing content on the car industry, car news, and then, of course, on my very own project cars as well. Right now, I'm working on a 2016 Mustang GT, and I also got a 2015 Mustang V6. So, I like Stangs, you know? You like Degs? Anyway, I got dinner cooking. I'm going to go take care of that. You guys enjoy the rest of your YouTube browsing, but why don't you come by every now and then, all right? See ya.